everyone, how's everything going? Here we are with our next very exciting project where we wanted to show you how truly easy it is to create a game environment by combining ShapeLab and Unity. In this video, I'll talk about the process of simple and easy game environment creation from beginning to end, where ShapeLab is going to be used for the assets. And as probably many of you know, Unity is a mostly free cross-platform game engine, so we'll use it to build a very simple but quite immersive environment using free content from the asset store to help us speed up the process. This is more of a showcase video rather than a full-on tutorial, just to display the opportunities ShapeLab has to offer. Of course, there are other apps or game engines to support your game creation and we might as well do more of these in the future, but as Unity is still a very common example in the industry and has a lot of educational material online, we wanted to show you an example of using your ShapeLab models in it. Basically how it all started was we were browsing through our models when the thought came to us how cool would it be to see the dragon model in a game environment? And the more we talked about it, we figured it's really not that hard to come up with something in ShapeLab after all. So first off, we made a mood board with some inspo on what setting we could imagine the dragon in. We had some talks about a cave, either a closed one or a tunnel-like one with some lit backdrop. But we quickly ditched the idea and went for an open space approach for an overall better lit environment. We were scavenging through scenes from The Hobbit and Skyrim for instance, two great examples that focus on dragons in somewhat different ways. Browsing through pictures, movie and game set designs, we got really inspired by the art stones of Avatar's Awa Shrine, so while switching back and forth of creating a grey box in Unity and pre-visualization in ShapeLab, we started having a more and more clear vision of a place, with the stones representing limbs in the main area and some desert rocks in the background with more light orange brown shades to complement the dragon's color scheme. And finally, we thought some bluish lighting could present some complementary colors enhancing the atmosphere. Of course, you can go crazy with the detailed assets in ShapeLab, just like you've seen it on the turntable before. But for a quick project, a less hyper-realistic scene was more optimal for us. Some of the low-poly assets and previs was already created with ShapeLab, and the low-poly scene in its entirety was assembled in Unity. It's important to mention here that setting up a project in Unity can be a meticulous job. However, with the numerous free assets, game templates and projects available, it's very easy to take your sculpts to the next level, even as a newbie in game creation. The Universal Render Pipeline is the most basic game template and it's kind of user slash artist friendly being compatible with multiple platforms, PC included, of course. This saves us the time of coding the basic interactions and rules a game would need. Using URP is not only good for game creation, but can also come quite handy for creating nice videos of your sculpted environments or characters, rather than animating and rendering them frame by frame. Naturally, this is circumstantial, but the scene we're building here is much more optimal with Unity in this scenario. There are tons of resources online to help you get started in Unity, so if you have any questions, you can just go ahead and search it up on the internet. So, as we're finished with the low poly scene, we can see what type of assets will be needed and how many. Then, with a full asset list, we could get started on creating all of the high poly sculpts in ShapeLab. At first, I tried out many different types of things just to feel out what's the quickest way to create the scene we wanted. 
I already started sketching or practicing creating stones, rocks and cliffs in ShapeLab way before the final concept was agreed on. I did this to have some kind of idea about what settings I should use further on. The clay tool is super useful in this case. I used it with a low fall off and high strength, um, switching the height constraint on and off. A similar but different build up effect can be used on the standard brush as well. I selected a rectangle alpha and cursor and turned the spray on. I also tried to create some alphas, but in the end it was more efficient to just download free ones and import them. I actually modified them a little bit in Photoshop to be stronger. With the right density and area values, I could fill the mesh super quickly with texture. Another handy tool is the trim in this case, as with a low fall off value and high strength, it could create some circular indents other tools couldn't have. I also used it to create all the smooth surface a rock would have. I actually kept using these techniques throughout creating all of the stones and I always colored them after. If you create cracks on the stone by carving them out, you can actually make it look deeper by using the inflate brush with the um, dynamic resolution turned off. If you want to keep a quad mesh but still need more resolution, just use the subdivide command as much as you need and use your tools with dynamic resolution turned off. We're already working on implementing subdivision levels, so that's something to be excited about in the future. For the bigger stones, I use the smaller ones and boolean them together and then stretch it out to the proper form. I exported them one by one in the end using texture export as well. And as the scene was going to have a lot of objects in it, I decimated them during export so ShapeLab would create normal maps in one go. If you embed the textures into the model, you just have to drag and drop them into Unity and they will appear as intended. Unfortunately, we had to use models that 
went through quite a big drop in resolution because we didn't have like supercomputers but in the end the whole scene still had a great vibe so we were completely okay with that. While the asset creation is in progress, the lighting of the scene can already take place as the low poly scene is well enough of a guidance on what the final scene would look like. As previously mentioned, we agreed on a bit of contrast between the color of the models and the lighting. The movement was actually already inside the URP template, so no coding was needed here. In the meantime, the assets are finished, so the placeholders can go away. And if everything is set in its place, then it's time to see if anything needs to be modified in the last round. While messing around with the scene, we actually realized that the daylight is way too much and a night scene would be much better, you know, much more fitting. After all this, the last thing is to make a build from the project and BAM! That's it! You can move around in your scene created with ShapeLab. You can screen record moving around in the scene for your portfolio or maybe put some animation in the mix. The options from here on are endless. So hope you'll like the final look and see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.